The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Diamond webinar series. And I'm going to give a few more minutes for um, some more people to get on. Um, it's 1.59. So um, I'm going to give to about 2.02, and we will get started. So please bear with us, and we will get started momentarily. Thank you. Got one more minute, and we will get started. and we will get started. Welcome. Welcome to the Diamond webinar series. I'm glad you were able to join us today. My name is Marsha Diamond and I'm an RD and, um, and a food service business uh, consultant and I have today with me guest presenter executive chef Brian Conklin of Rex Healthcare. Thank you for joining us for Do You Want to Increase Satisfaction and Loyalty Through Food? Some housekeeping tips if you have any questions please feel free to um, type them in. And um, this webinar and the certificate of participation will be posted um, on Tuesday at www.prohealthpasta.com. So again, welcome to our webinar. Do you want to increase customer satisfaction through food? So let me tell you a little bit about the chef that's joining us today. I am very honored and privileged to know Ryan and his talents. And um, Ryan Conklin is an executive chef who's been in the healthcare culinary operations for the last 11 years. He is an executive chef currently at Rex Healthcare in Raleigh, North Carolina. He's a certified executive chef with the American Culinary Federation. He's also part of his Black Chef organization. Um, he has a great blog called NewSchoolHospitalFood.com. If you need to reach him, you'll be able to at this address and also follow him. He's got some great tidbits at Chef Ryan Conklin. Thank you, Marsha. Yes. Pleasure to be here today. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining us. It's great ideas and great uh, takeaways you'll have. I'm also very uh, happy to have this sponsored by Pro Health Pasta, who is kind enough to realize how important it is for everyone to understand customer satisfaction and loyalty through food and how to make a difference in their operation. You will walk away with many takeaways, but the overall takeaways will be tips to create menus that create customer demand, whether it's a patient, whether it's a resident, whether it's an employee or a retail customer, that impacts the health, the healing, and wellness, and certainly your bottom line. You'll also come away with a lot of aha moments and solutions for taking your favorite comfort foods and transforming them into using, transforming them using healthy substitution. You're in for an exciting hour today. So, changing healthcare food service perception. You know, we always hear about people saying, well, you're in a healthcare environment, therefore your menu should be healthy. It's really the perception of healthy. It's giving the stigma of positiveness more than you're going to walk away slim and fit. So it's that feeling of health, healing, and wellness that you should always remember. And healthcare today, obviously, is changing the world of hospital food service or healthcare food service, whether you're senior living. And Rex Dining has been on this journey, and is, uh, Ryan's going to tell us some of their stories. 
Yeah, well, it's been it has been quite the journey so far. Um, over the years, uh, it's, it's about six years uh, that our team at Rex has really been focused, um, and it, it's great because we kind of have the goal of becoming the premier healthcare food service provider in the nation and quite possibly the world, and that's kind of our mission statement. So as we as we incorporate new menu items, new dishes, we always have that in the back of our minds. Um, and it all started off, we, we've, we've gained a lot of um, notoriety with our patients, um, increased patient satisfaction rates in the local community and throughout the country. But it has started off with really, with, we started off with, with a really nice, healthy patient menu. And that was the first step that we took to elevate our food service. Um, we took, we started to rethink dishes and um, rethink of what that that hospital food, you know, phrase has generally said in the past, and we really want to turn that that phrase into healthcare cuisine. So we've really um, we worked on our menus. We started with a very healthy patient menu, and then our retail customers and catering customers as well. We went into that direction. Uh, we had to educate our customers, educate even our patients at times on what these what these items are, but once we got them to buy in and taste these new dishes, it has been very exciting for us, and um, we have a very dynamic team that's that's really um, continuing to raise the bar of what hospital food should be known as. We do a lot of innovative things. We have an on-site culinary training program that we're very proud of called the Black Hat Chefs. Uh, we've done some very unique things. Um, we've also designed one of the first ever uh, hospital food apps, which talks about all the um, our programs via a, an app software for patients and customers to download for their smartphones. And um, we really get involved with the community as far as cooking demos, tastings, and we really want to get the word out there that we we are we have a vision to change what hospital food is known as. And the app, I think, is on, I think there's a picture of the app on, on your screens right now. And the other thing to realize is it's, you know, hospital food, the vision should come in as positive. It's a positive stigma, a positive passion. Um, and that's really the journey we should be taking together. Yeah. For when, I, when I first started and, uh, you know, after work, would leave work and go to the store with my chef coat on with a, you know, with, with my hospital's logo on it, you know, I would get some looks. You know, they'd see you were a chef at first, and then the first thing they'd say, oh, but you're a chef in a hospital. Over time, that's changed, though. And now when I go out, and I'm, I'm proud to have that chef coat on, and people are coming coming and asking for recipes and commenting on our food, and, and it's really great to see what can happen to a, a healthcare food service program if you have passionate people that are, you know, really um, – you know, passionate about taking their food and making it more healthy and creating more menu options. So, you know, when I look at healthy start to create menus, things I consider, and I'm going to pass it over to Ryan, but things I consider yeah. is health, health, one, fall in love with food, create consumer demand, living a healthy lifestyle, the eye of the food, and therapeutic approaches. Yeah, and I'd like to talk I'd like to mention self-help while, while you mentioned it, Marsha, because that's a buzzword going, um, buzz phrase going through our industry right now. And, you know, when it comes to food, it's, it's really secretly eating better. And as a chef in healthcare, um, that's something we're doing on a regular basis is developing recipes and menu items where we can sneak a bit of health in there, a, a, a bit of healthy eating to, to dishes that classically weren't so healthy for you. You know, just recently we just came up with a really cool menu item where we took a Caesar salad, very popular item, you know, but we want to make it more healthy. We want, we want to use that stealth health approach. And uh, one of the unique things we did with that Caesar salad, we made a tofu Caesar dressing using, using uh, silken tofu, and it dramatically lowered the fat content in the dressing. We took away any mayonnaise or, or e extra added oils. So it's a tofu-based Caesar dressing. Then we're adding capers, a bit of anchovies and lemon juice, a little bit of Parmesan cheese, and to our customers, they don't know the difference. You know, we don't we don't even tell them on our menu that it's a tofu dressing. You know, we want them to try it, like it, and then be able to explain to them that, hey, by the way, this is more healthy for you. 
Interesting you said that. It's not that they don't know the difference. It's just the opportunity to try something. It's just that it's more pleasing. And they're learning to fall in love with food because of the way you are presenting it. And so the thing with self-help is you have to remember to make sure that people can, you can create consumer demand by doing some things like this. Um, you know, people are into li living a healthy lifestyle wherever they are. And even if they're in a healing component, they still want to get better. So how do you develop a creative consumer demand? And how do you have the eye of the food? And everyone's saying, what are you talking about, eye of the food? What's well, like eye of the tiger, that passion for food. Um, and you also, in a, in, a, in a hospital, you have to consider therapeutic approaches because we really want you to not only think of retail, but we want you to think of incorporating these ideas into your patient and resident menus. The whole idea is to get people hydrated and nourished. They want them to have that experience, um, feeling healthy. The thing is I want to say when we're talking about this, and we're going to come back to some of these components as we give you tips to create these menus, is that um, people have to trust your food service. And there has to be a credibility to it. So like Chef Ryan is incorporating things that he knows are safe but healthy. So he's not going to incorporate a type of ingredient that won't be um, above board. The other thing is, by doing things like creating these buzzes or influences or these healthier options, you'll probably lower your inventory, lower your production. For example, if you took a pasta um, that perhaps is a red lentil pasta that can be incorporated into your environment, and when it's cooked, it looks like any other pasta, but it has higher nutrition higher protein, um, has great taste factor, and you put your own sauce or whatever on it, you've reduced your production, not having to do allergen-free, vegan, uh, vegetarian, or any of the other diets. You've just increased production and increased inventory and made an item more mainstream. So again, understanding culinary needs, those kind of components of that. The other part of thinking about menu options is food experiences. And the idea with food today, whatever the food is, is does it evoke an experience? Now, obviously, the surroundings, how you color, the color of the plate, the size of the cup, et cetera, plays a role. But the color of the food and the smell of the food will evoke Number one, an experience. And number two, loyalty to your facility, whether it's resident, patient, or, or retail. Because I'm saying that because you should be incorporating these philosophies or to create these menu items the same way to impact. Um, for example, mashed potato. You know, we all love a good mashed potato. Well, a lot of us. The point is, why not incorporate a pumpkin spice into it? This type of year is... is seasonal or it's the holiday. And by doing that, you have a good potato and now you're evoking a sense of comfort. People incorporate it into their menu options. You actually increase variety, not necessarily production, but again, you are giving, transforming them to a healthier. We all know that the pumpkin spice adding at some value, you know, you look at some of the components, cinnamon, the antioxidants, you know, adding um, Ryan, what else could we add into a mashed potato to a mashed potatoes? Oh, you could you take fresh herbs, for example. Um, you know, if you're doing a, a, a Latin dish or a, um, you know, let's say um, a uh, mojo grilled pork chop that you want to serve mashed potatoes with, well, why don't you take those mashed potatoes now and start infusing different flavors into them? Fresh cilantro, maybe some um, roasted jalapenos or... Um, uh, a little bit of lime zest as well. Something that's going to complement that pork chop as well. You could really um, incorporate a lot of ethnic ingredients into the mashed potatoes, and it's a great way of really rounding out your dish. The other thing is when we think of smell, you know, cinnamon, the smell. You know, you have patients that the sense of smell has been diminished, and to increase the sense of smell, just giving a mashed potato is not going to increase the sense of smell. So something like a pumpkin spice or cilantro or, you know, uh, cumin, will, depending on your cultural and your generational 
uh, demographics. But those things incite smell, and if people get stimulated in smell, they'll eat more. Cancer patients, orange seems to be a component of that. So maybe, you may sound, maybe the orange death into a mashed potato. Consider incorporating foods that will healthy and stimulate, will give that experience, and therefore create better customer healing. The other component is the global, you know, and local. And when we talk about local foods, you know, it's great to have local farmers and restaurants incorporating ingredients or growing, like many of you, growing their own herbs and spices. But there's a local restaurant by me that has local to table because some things they can get local, and they've got global items, global wines, because you, there isn't an ability to get everything. And so if you're going to incorporate, you incorporate the freshness, which also creates, again, people think local equals healing. We're not agreeing or disagreeing, but what people believe becomes perception, becomes reality, and affects the bottom line. Yeah, I'd like to add to that, Marsha, when you, when you talk about local, you know, certain larger food service operations, obviously local produce can't support all of their needs, but but when you when you do have that opportunity to do, to use something local, you should really let your guests know that. Um, for instance, we have a nice signboard in front of our our cafe, and um, it down in North Carolina, sweet potatoes, um, kale, collard greens, they're pretty much available all season long for us. You know, so so when we when we get those from our local produce vendor, we like to highlight the farm that we're buying them from. And what it does is it, it, it lets everyone walk, while they're walking into our cafe, they know that, hey, these, these, these are food service professionals. They're dedicated to working with local farmers and really um, highlighting um, North Carolina produce. And I, it just creates an, a, an environment right before you even walk in to try the food that knowing that, that you have chefs and, and leaders that are dedicated to getting the, the best quality possible for them. It's, it creates an experience. And, you know, when we talk about seasonings and garnishes, um, try to think about more of your micro beans or red cabbage or items that you can incorporate so that you can incorporate a better experience. By no means are we saying not to be transparent in communication to let people know that these ingredients are in it, whether it's tofu or it's cilantro. Uh, you will let people know that because of transparency and communication. But what we are saying is you need to find um, the ability for, for example, pumpkin, if spice. If someone is not allergic, and I don't know, it could be someone allergic to cinnamon, you need to know that there's a pumpkin spice uh, mashed potatoes. You know, we are saying make sure that it is clear. Not, you're not hiding ingredients. You are incorporating ingredients so that you are changing the mundane to the wow, and you are using more healthier um, infusion of ingredients. For example, if you have a, a tuna fish salad, but you incorporate not only celery and, let's say, carrots, but maybe you even put radishes in it. Someone may have a radish. You need to incorporate that. But again, letting people know you're putting these ingredients to make. The reason you are doing this is to make taste, bring out taste. We're not saying hide hide it from people, but again, transparency, but also don't be shy with your culinary expertise over flavoring. I mean, I'm telling you, the pumpkin spice, I did it for my mother-in-law, and she really wasn't eating. She's in a senior living facility. She was not eating, hydrating, believe me, um, and not eating. The pumpkin brought back memories, and so I was able to add a lot of it, and it stimulated it so that she wanted to taste more, and I was able to get that. You know, taking a pasta that um, you know, a gluten-free pasta, but red lentil, you know, if you like, you like the flavor profile and adding a little vodka, tomato sauce, um, tomato vodka, or no vodka in it, but tomato, like a little light cream sauce, you can get a higher protein, higher nutrients into someone. So yes, you have to be aware of therapeutics, but at the same token, don't be afraid of your culinary, you know, wow. And that's kind of where Ryan and I are coming from when we say that. Now, the other thing is, I need you to be aware of that there are natural ingredients that can add color. So again, 
I mean, you know, using natural ingredients to incorporate color is such a wonderful thing. Again, people eat with their eyes. And if everything looks bland, it's going, you know, you're not going to get that wow. So again, look at these natural ingredients and, and experiment. Um, I did a presentation last year with senior facilities, food service directors, and we, I brought in a whole bunch of spices and herbs and asked them to identify it. And a lot of them couldn't except for the salt and pepper and oregano. So what's interesting is you've got a whole world out there. It's not those days anymore. You've got garlic salt and you've got onion salt. And uh, Ryan, what other salt did we just get this weekend as a gift we got for something? Um, I mean, you can you can infuse you can make your own salt if you want to. <laughs> it sounds crazy, but um, we've recently um, been been actually infusing our own flavors into salts. We we made one with um, the sriracha hot sauce. You know, there, there's ways that you can you can take simple things, okay, just like a salt, and and you can really flavor that with herbs. Um, a reduced vinegar, adding it to a salt is going to add another flavor to it, and it's just it's just a different way to present new flavors on the plate. And that's the key. The key is how do you present new flavors on the plate. Now, comfort foods. I know that we all, you know, we, we all have our comfort foods that evoke a good thing about our life or, or an event. And so the thing is I want you to remember is who you're, you, who you're dealing with, who your customer is. Look at their culture look at the generation, take that into consideration on the menu items that you're putting on your menu, and then think about ingredients. How do you infuse yesterday's recipes with today's flavors? I mean, on the right side of this is a bento box, which is for a child, but it's all fish. Now, obviously, it evokes the feeling. It looks like cupcakes, and it evokes, so they were able to infuse that to get them to enjoy it. Now, obviously, a lot of people comfort and nostalgia for dessert. Again, using your dessert, if you had a, a, um, a quick bread with zucchini in it or carrots, again, incorporating and making it healthy. People love to try that, infusing that. Um, when, I, when I see that comfort food, you know, I think of our operation of how popular our homemade chicken noodle soup is. You know, and um, we can try multiple different soups as specials, but at the end of the day, our customers want chicken noodle soup, but it, chicken noodle soup can, can go many different ways. You know, you can do it home style, you can make it from scratch, but you also have opportunity there. Like Marcia said, you can infuse those new flavors into the chicken noodle soup. Um, for instance, um, some, some fresh, in, in the summertime when basil is abundant, you know, adding some fresh basil and maybe some lemon juice and roasted garlic to that chicken noodle soup all of a sudden brings it to a whole new level. Um, you can also you can also use it as as a vessel to incorporate newer healthy ingredients. For example, substituting the um, the regular noodles for an alternative noodle. A, um, you mentioned the um, the red lentil pasta would be a great thing to add to a chicken noodle soup in in lieu of a traditional noodle. You can also use quinoa, farro as as a substitution or an addition to a regular chicken noodle soup. And what you're going to do is you're going to take that, that item that's already very popular and you're going to be able to, to get people excited about it, but also make it more healthy and infuse it with new ingredients as well. I love it. I love the idea. How about, how many of you grew up on tomato soup and grilled cheese? So that evokes my mom making tomato soup and grilled cheese for me. And like I was telling Ryan, the grilled cheese maker that you had, kind of look like a square uh, bread thing. You, you buttered it on both sides. You put it on. It's like uh, on the fire, and then you turned it over. Kind of like a small panini, one singular sandwich machine. I don't know what it's called, but that's what I remember. And what I remember about the tomato soup of yesteryear is that my mother would open Campbell's and give me a can of, uh, a cup of tomato soup and then make Velveeta white bread grilled cheese. Yes, I do evoke and remember that memory. But today, my taste buds have evolved, and I love a tomato soup, maybe with gnocchi or with some pasta in it. And I love to have grilled cheese. Nothing against Velveeta, but I love the cheeses of today. There's so many more um, taste profiles. And also to have a better type of 
not a better, but a more healthy or diversified grain that I like bread. So making it, taking yesterday's flavors, making it today's recipes and infusing it. How about a grilled cheese with, you know, roasted red peppers? So again, taking those idea, ideas that you have and look at your population. And maybe it's not roasted red peppers, maybe it's red chilies. I, you know, knowing your population. There's a, a store in the city that opened up and it's called Rice to Riches. Interesting is, um, it basically is comfort food. It's he heaven's version of comfort food. It's rice pudding. And they have probably 45 varieties of rice pudding. What do they have? Rice pudding. They write, we sell rice pudding. If you don't want that, you can have rice pudding. And if you don't want that, you can have rice pudding. Okay. What they do is a variety of rice pudding because it is a comfort food. They have taken what what is in this area, I live in the Northeast, and taken everything from holiday to seasonal to all year round flavors and made a kind of fun. But again, they use all different rices. So it's interesting how you take a comfort food and really expand upon it. And Ryan, what did you tell me you, would do, you do at your facility for catering with rice? Yeah, we've, had, um, we've actually had some, uh, some events that we've had a rice pudding, rice pudding martini station where we had rice uh, different varieties of rice pudding served in martini glasses. So kind of like an, a more upscale presentation. Um, you know, we had one that was based with uh, a mascarpone cheese. We also did a healthier version with uh, brown rice and some dried cranberries in it as well. Also garnished with some fresh mint. So, you know, it really, um, there's there's tons of ways out there, but to, to really entice, you know, comfort foods and kind of bring them to a new level in, in a new world. And um, that, that was one of the events that we did. And you, you also mentioned the grilled cheeses. You know, I, th I think they're really, they really have come back with a rage. Um, grilled cheese is a great way to incorporate seasonal veg vegetables. You know, in the summertime, when you have local zucchini that's fresh that you can add and, and, and maybe roasting that with some caramelized onions and then a local cheese instead of a, nor you know, use source a local cheese that's available in your area that you can complement to it, as well as perhaps featuring bread from a local artisan bake bakery. So all of a sudden you've taken this grilled cheese and you've added multiple depths, uh, multiple layers of flavor to this, and you've, you've kind of um, tweaked out a, a regular classic, something that was, you know, like when Marcia said she grew up eating grilled cheese, well now she's a grown-up and she can eat grilled cheese too. And it's interesting you say that for the different generations, the millennials and younger, and I'm more seasoned, um, are more sophisticated in their tastes. So even though they, you know, the more they're exposed to and the influences make them wanting more and expectation more. So remember, healthy food has to taste good. And so incorporating ingredients into something comfortable is really great. The big thing is putting food into a form that they will eat. That's the key. That's the key for your customers, whether it's retail, patients, residents. That's it. It has to resonate with them. Um, you know, you look at school-age children, and they love the pasta, um, and they love bread. So, you know, they don't like lentils. And if you're going to give them most, if you're going to give them lentils, they're not going to eat them. But if you want to give them a higher protein, a higher version, then you incorporate that. Um, a red lentil soup probably goes a lot further than just red lentil beans. Um, buckwheat, farro. Um, uh, many of you may have heard of um, bow ties and kasha. It's um, an ethnic dish, and many people eat it. But now what they're doing, because farro is such higher in protein, is incorporating farro with that or using a different type of noodle with that. So increasing the nutritional but very, very healthy and obviously the bottom line, because if you, again, if you can get the same amount of protein without someone having to add on and add this, you are evolving. Production, same. The other thing is you know, just Marcia, when I see when I yeah. see this slide up that says, um, you know, putting foods into a form they will eat, and you mentioned the pasta, and I, and I think of pasta and meatballs, how, how popular, um, how, how much of a popular pairing that is. You know, taking, taking a specialty pasta, uh, with a unique meatball, we've we've made on our facility um, 
frica, green wheat frica meatballs, so a vegetarian meatballs, with your red lentil pasta. Okay, so right there, it, you're you're drawing people in because pasta and meatballs is is already approachable, and then you can make a really robust tomato sauce with some some um, roasted mushrooms and some fresh herbs, and and I think you'll have an easier time promoting this new dish because you're using pasta and meatballs as the vessel. It's a phrase, it's a dish that your customers are already popular with. Another thing is tacos. Um, you know, everyone loves a good taco. And you, we talked about farro, we talked about quinoa, some whole wheat items that are out there now and, and very trendy. Instituting them into your taco with the ground meat or even as a replacement to the ground meat is a great way for people to try new things but with a com comfortable way of eating it. I think people are going to are going to be more enthusiastic about trying something new when it's in a preparation that they've they've loved in the past and there's still room to customize it as well but you really want to choose when you're introducing something new and fresh think of that vessel that you're presenting it with because if you if you use something very approachable people are going to be more inclined to try it. You know, interesting you said about a vessel. Could you elaborate more on that vessel component? Well, the vessel, like, like I mentioned the taco, you know, um, I'll, I'll, let's say, um, you know, um, a lettuce wrap, think of that. Lettuce wrap, when you go to P.F. Chang's, I have a, one of our cooks used to be a uh, manager at P.F. Chang's and he said, hands down, that's the number one item on their menu is their chicken lettuce wraps, okay? So, we tried that on our menu. Now we, we added a, a we did a grilled chicken version of it, but but we knew that it's popular in the industry. We knew people knew what they were. Okay, so now it's a great opportunity to add something new to that lettuce wrap. Okay, you're going to add the whole grains or even um, you know a different type of vegetable that people classically might might be um, might not be too excited to try it, like a a butternut squash squash, so to speak. You know. Adding a newer vegetable to a, a a popular way of eating it. Hope, hopefully that explains it more. That's good. I'm sorry. Um, the the other thing is when you talk about foods into a form to eat, companies like Red Mill, Pro Health Pasta, some um, you know um, there are other companies that take like a chickpea pa chickpea flour that you can use and incorporate into a form that will eat. So again, getting more nutrition. Consider those components. From a cost perspective, I always hear, but I'm telling you, you're using less and you're incorporating it and therefore creating menus and creating customer demand. So try to think that way. See, this is the thing with school-age kids, especially with school-age kids and especially with the elderly, we've got to incorporate more nutrition and give them a better way to get healed because they're not eating portions like you, like you think, or that is advocated by um, some legislation. They're just not eating it. There's more waste scraped off those plates. So if you have to give them a smaller portion, you want to get the most impact to do it. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. In the classics. That's something we love to do at our facility here. And um, what you're seeing is a picture of one of our chefs designed this dish, and it's um, it's a tuna salad. It's our tuna salad, okay? And most most operations they sell some kind of tuna fish, whether it be on a sandwich or perhaps a cold tuna salad plate. Usually pretty popular. Not everyone loves it. What we're doing here, okay, is we're taking that same tuna fish that you would make for a regular tuna salad, but we're removing a lot of the mayonnaise, a lot of the added extra added fat, and we're incorporating fresher ingredients into that tuna salad. So what you're seeing is some sliced artichoke hearts, capers. You're also seeing it garnished with a roasted tomato and shallot salsa. And then there's some also side sauces, um, sauces on the plate. There's a balsamic drizzle and a roasted pepper sauce. And then we serve this with a, a little bit of a, a crostini, a little crostini that you can kind of spread your tuna salad onto the crostini, and with a baby green salad and a little bit of um, lemon ricotta cheese. So what we've taken is this classic dish, tuna salad plate, and we're, we're really just saying, how can we make this better? How can we tweak this out to make it more healthy, one, 
and also introduce some new ingredients in healthy, um, healthier eating. So this one's been very popular with us. Um, we've, we've also taken things like potato salad, usually pretty popular. It goes great as a side dish for a sandwich. You know, why not doing it roasted potatoes, making a roasted potato salad, or even using sweet potatoes instead, and then incorporating some of your seasonal ingredients into it. You know, this time of year, that pumpkin spice um, that Marcia mentioned earlier would go great on some roasted sweet potatoes. Adding some dried cranberries to that and perhaps some fresh thyme would make a really nice cold salad. Great way to um, try something different. Yeah, also, we mentioned um, the rice puddings, very popular as well. You know, it's just it, there's a lot of opportunities to take classic dishes and, sit and look back at them and say, how can we make this dish with today's ingredients? And that's something we do frequently at our facility. And one of the things is one ingredient at a time. Sometimes less is more. Don't try to maybe infiltrate everything of your recipes, but start. Start, you know, incorporating, like I said about the quick breads, um, zucchini, or, you know, into a banana bread, putting something of complementary color, um, more nutrition. Um, there, you know, you know, the idea is you, you have a lot of your facilities have executive chefs and chefs, and, you know, you should collaborate with them to figure out what, what we can do to create customer demand and impact health and healing. Microgreens, red cabbage, cilantro, you know, those increase nutrients and vitamins. Um, you want to add strength into the food you have, it, it, meatloaf. Um, you know, you just want to incorporate into what people know, into the form they know to have it. And there's so much you can do. And if you set up a menu and take a look at the menu you have today and say, what ingredients or what food items can I look, take off and incorporate? So look at the menu. Don't redo your menu, but take a look and see how you can step it up just from what you have today. These pictures look good enough to eat, huh? This one right here. Um what we took here is um, we call this our grilled peach parfait breakfast plate. And it's not your traditional parfait. Um, this, is, this is served for actually our patients. We do do it in our retail operations as well on occasion. And what we've taken is we've taken Greek yogurt and we lay it in the bowl. We, we top it with our homemade granola, some fresh seasonal berries. Sometimes we use blackberries, blueberries, strawberries, whatever's in season. And then what we do is we take a warm, uh, a, a grilled peach and we, a, a fresh peach, I'm, I'm sorry, and we grill it and then we add it to the top of the parfait. So what, what's happening is there's all these flavor combinations. You've got a warm grilled peach with the ice cold yogurt, crunchy granola, fresh berries, garnish with a fresh mint, and it really is just a great little breakfast plate. Very simple to prepare, okay? Looks very well presented and um, gives you the opportunity to use your seasonal produce um, fruits especially that, that are out there. Now in the off season when peaches aren't in, in season so much, we do use a frozen peach which is okay. They cut, we get these really nice frozen peaches and they're, they're of high quality and we let them thaw out and then we just grill them just like we did the fresh ones. And it just is a really unique presentation and you're taking a simple breakfast, you know, fruit and yogurt plate and you're really make, bringing it to that next level and it's all in that presentation. So looking at color, we look at flavor. You can even sprinkle on, you know, some, some you know, seasonings of, of different sorts. The other thing is I want you to remember is when you look at this, there's the positive of hospital food service. When I look at this, whether this was given to me in a restaurant, a hotel restaurant, in a local community restaurant, or in a hospital, or in my senior facility one day, this would prompt a positive and impact. It already, looking at it, I feel healthier. That's the difference. You're also starting to see a lot, a lot more outside the box thinking, um, especially when it comes to vegetarian, uh, vegetarians. You know, I can go back to when I was starting out in my young days as a chef. When we would have a vegetarian come, we, we never really had vegetarian menu items. We, we would prepare something, but there wasn't a huge creativity piece there. A lot of times it was a simple grilled portobello mushroom or a pre-made veg, um, vegetarian burger, which made them happy, but I think nowadays the expectation is, is much higher than, 
than it was then. Um, what you're starting to see in lieu of the typical veggie burger are more unique things. Um, lots of ethnic foods, uh, Indian curries, uh, vegetarian style. Um, we have on our menu a homemade peanut butter and jelly. And we take local Virginia peanuts and we roast, we roast them. We make our own peanut butter. And then we serve them on a really, really high quality bread. And we encourage people on our menu, it actually says, try it with an ice cold glass of milk. Because nothing goes better like a peanut butter jelly sandwich and ice cold glass of milk. So we're taking something so simple but putting a little bit of love into it. You're also seeing things like tofu and vegetable stir fries for vegetarian dishes, um, tiny acorn squashes with a quinoa and wild rice stuffing, very popular in our operation. Then you're also seeing things, sometimes you have to use a convenience product. We're, we found a really great black bean burger but after we grill it, we add some fresh avocados and a little tomato basil salad and serve it on a very high quality uh, cracked wheat roll. So we've taken it, something rather, rather simple and a couple chef crafted elements to it and it's a real popular dish. You're also seeing here more than mashed potatoes as a side dish. Mashed potatoes, mac and cheese, Typically, they are served as sides uh, throughout our operations, but now you're starting to see some more of a chef influence in that. Sweet potato hash. This would be a great opportunity to use like a black bean pasta with some cilantro pesto. Roasted spaghetti squash, even roasted cauliflower. Really popular, really fresh, and when you roast it, it has caramelization on the outside. People are excited about it, and they want to they, a lot of times are asking for recipes. What's interesting, what were you telling me about the pasta? What can you do with pasta? I'm talking about mashed potatoes, veggie burgers, give me some ideas with pasta. Okay, so like I mentioned a black bean pasta. For a quick sauce for that, you can make a cilantro pesto, which is a puree of uh, cilantro with some fresh extra virgin olive oil. Toss it with the pasta really quick. You can then incorporate other flavors to it. Um, you can use it as a pasta salad as well. We did a really good one with the um, black bean pasta with roasted jalapenos, fresh grapes, and feta cheese. So a really fresh pasta salad on the side, accompany a nice burger or something, and just a different healthy approach to the typical pasta salad. On this slide, what you'll see is our uh, gourmet potato wedges. So in our operation, we don't have any fryers. We took out all of our deep fat fryers, but we didn't just say no to French fries. What we came up with was a gourmet potato wedge program where we're taking fresh potato wedges and we actually bake them or roast them in the oven, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, salt, and pepper, and then we as you can see on the screen, we infuse other fresh ingredients to these potatoes. Our most popular one, our dill pickle wedge, all we're doing is taking some freshly chopped dill, garlic, and a little bit of malt vinegar, and some sea salt. When you eat these potatoes, it really it reminds you of a dill pickle. And then we have some homemade dipping sauces as well. But these are a great way to incorporate those fresh herbs and, and grated cheeses, and it's a healthier alternative to the classic French fry that we, we all love, but aren't so good for you.
Hello? Oh, hello? Hello. Sorry about that. Brian? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Sorry about that. You didn't hear me on... Okay. No, I, ha I haven't heard you. Okay, so I, I apologize. We have technical difficulties, so let's go over to this. I was going to say, um, when it comes to these kind of food items, and you were all looking here, these, take a look at these kind of foods, pizza, the potatoes, the pasta. And the assignment for you is all to take these items and either add an ingredient, add a seasoning, add a flavor, so that you can infuse and elevate them within your operation. How can you make a difference in this operation? How do you take it to the next level? Regular items, it's not changing your whole menu, but it's infusing these flavors into it. Did you want to add to that, Ryan? No, you, you hit the nail right on the head. You really want to, um, you know, think of when, you, when you're looking at those plates as well, though, you want to look at the colors. You want them to complement each other. You want a colorful presentation. You know, if you're, if you're using, you know, grilled chicken breast and cauliflower, you don't want to add mashed potatoes to that dish. You really want to look at the colors. It, it goes a long, a long way when that dish is presented to your, your customers. And mac and cheese. I know that, you know, I don't usually say one size can fit all, if you know me. I don't usually say that. But in this case, I wanted to talk about the pastas, the grains, um, and even, even the bread. Um, it's not so much the main entrees, but side dishes. One size can fit all. If you have a pasta that's um, red lentil, black bean, rice, corn, that you can, I'm not saying every day, but that you can incorporate into your menu, you can reduce production and inventory so you don't have to have separate for everything. So again, start to think about those type of things when you check menus, what ways you can incorporate it. I mean, this looks great, and it's, you would think this was typical or average mac and cheese. But actually, it's a rice pasta. So it tastes the same, and people enjoy it. How do we step it up even further? Maybe some uh, vegetables and some seasonal stuff. The next step, maybe for a non-vegetarian, grilled chicken. So again, taking that food and stepping it up. I just wanted to, I'd be, I wanted to make sure that I mentioned this. this there are a special diets, vegans, vegetarians, and allergies. I mean, if someone doesn't like a food in a college setting, or in a, in a retail environment, especially in healthcare, it'll get a veto rope. And therefore, even if it's still good for you, so make sure the flavor profile is there. Make sure you're infusing that smell and that color. Just to let you know, there are 12 million vegetarians today. There are 600, oh, missing a zero, 600,000 vegans, and there are 15 million Americans with food allergy and on the rise. So when you are developing menus and infusing, consider this. Really start to think about what my menu mix can be, how do I infuse more flavors um, so that everyone can eat off the same menu in some way. So I wanted to, um, some questions. Ryan, do you want to add to that? No. Um, I, I'm, I mean, mac and cheese, I just want to throw one thing in there. It is another thing that's all the rage. Um, I just wanted to add one idea that um, we've been using recently, and we create a mac and cheese bar where you can have your different types of pastas cooked off, okay, and perhaps a couple different sauces, and then let your customers customize their own mac and cheese. Very popular concept. Um, you know, you mentioned that black bean pasta. I think it would make a great southwestern style mac and cheese with, um, you know, um, some some marinated Southwest or, or um, Latin spiced chicken breast, maybe some grilled pineapple in with it as well. So it's just a great way 
to add some new flavors. We just did one here in North Carolina where we took traditional pasta and then we added our barbecued pork to it with some local North Carolina hoop cheddar cheese and some fresh uh, thinly sliced scallions. So we've taken all these things that are very popular in our region and we've incorporated it into mac and cheese and, and the sky is really the limit there. Thank you. So I wanted to thank our sponsor, Gluten Free Pasta, um, Pro Health Pasta, and um, you know, you will see some of their stuff in here and I'm going but I wanted to thank our sponsor and I'm gonna come back, but I wanted to conclude by saying using yesterday's recipes with today's infusion of flavors and products to transform them into healthier options definitely will increase customer satisfaction, whether it's an elderly patient, a resident, a family member, a, a hospital patient, or, or a customer in your retail. Putting healthy food into a form that people will enjoy also heightens your food service brand. Again, thank you, uh, ProHealth Pasta, for um, your black bean, red lentil, and your introduction of Really, this is a brand new company that's really incorporating fettuccine, rotini, trying to bring into a form that we're all eating. If you haven't, take a look at some of their product lines. Um, they, they will be at, if you're going to Fenty, they're going to be at 1258 booth. And if you visit them and give them the code Diamond Webinar, you'll get a free case of pasta sent to your facility. So um, the other thing I wanted to mention is some housekeeping tips. People had asked, um, this PowerPoint slideshow and the certificate of participation will be located um, at WW Pro Health Pasta. You'll be getting an email tomorrow. It'll probably be posted next week for that. If you have any questions for myself or Ryan, um, my email address is here. And Ryan's is <laughs> Ryan. Yep. Ryan, yeah. right over here. I'm going to put you back. There we are. There we go. So you have both of those there. Again, if you walk away with thinking about being more mindful in your, in your way you're developing your recipes and incorporating, hopefully you've walked away with some aha moments. Um, I did get a couple of questions. I answered them, infused them into our statements. Um, and the other thing is, I did get some compliments. Some people are incorporating the ProHealth into, they already just got some sample. Um, and someone just said, try it before and it even tastes better than regular pasta and I don't feel guilty about it. So thank you very much for your comments. Thank you for participating today. Hopefully you walked away with making a difference and solutions for substituting um, into more of the aha moments and making a difference in your environment. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.